Good morning, folks. We're starting with NASA's Earth Observatory, showing the burn scar left behind by that significant wildfire that kicked off the month of May in California. We've had another cyclone pop up in the Indian Ocean, not yet named as of the early morning hours, but this development has been evident for days. She's going to head southwest. Heat wave is spreading north of the drought zone in India. East in China, the Hunan province saw more than 300 homes destroyed by floods and a deluge that destroyed crops as well. Months without rain in parts of Panama has drought at emergency levels. Hydroelectric dependence means they are cutting power and having mandatory commercial shutdowns. Hundreds of cattle have died of thirst. It's just a piece of the $200 million disaster that is getting worse. In the southwest Pacific, still got a chance for storms in Perth, the Queensland coastline, and Northland. In Southland, the Antarctic chill is racing up to you. There is a strong low over the UK at the moment, currently has wind warnings as the most serious in Europe right now, which spread west to Ireland. Taking a quick look at climate records, while parts of Australia just broke heat records, those are lagging in the United States behind cold and precipitation so far in 2013. Looking below that line shows where we were as of one year ago, quite a different story. Folks, you'd be crazy to say there isn't warming, but crazier to call it global warming. Cold and precipitation are winning right now, and that doesn't begin to factor the drought records, cyclone records, and tornado records on both sides of the scale. Let's focus on the central states here. The area of convergence mentioned yesterday had some flooding in Ellis, Kansas, as well as some terrific light shows. The air will continue to converge here today and spread northeast up Tornado Alley, where the low pressure extends almost up to my neck of the woods and takes the severe watches along with it, those big red L's for low pressure. Had a gamma burst yesterday from the Cygnus constellation. FYI mythology pegs Cygnus as the god of balance who led the first wave of the Titans. You remember that on April 27th, the highest energy light gamma burst ever recorded flashed out the heavens. Well, we've yet to see a six magnitude quake since the day before that in New Zealand, putting us about eight or nine days overdue for a large tremor and a few more days of quiet from failing a major watch for the first time this year. Looking at the solar wind, the speed is falling very slowly, and as it does so, the density appears to rise a bit, but the magnetic shield is holding easily with only minor penetration, and those same baseline inductions from past days are fading as well. I think the sun needs some love, folks. C3 should not be the highest flare reading on this chart during solar maximum, and it's not like she hasn't had the opportunity to flare larger. Big spots crest and fall asleep. Delta spots don't reach their potential, and developed complexity fades into magnetic banality. Best chance to get one today is from these departing sunspots on the southern hemisphere. It might also be prudent to monitor the incomers on the north. Umbral field, still open in an earth-facing position, but still not matching the field lines atop the SDO AIA. Try to reconcile that one. While you're pondering that, you may have noticed a corona hole directly on the equator and about to face earth. It wasn't there yesterday, but a surface event complemented by the decay of the sunspots northwest of it has opened a coronal hole set to directly face Earth. The field is certainly open here. I'm going to leave you with a plasma filament dancing into Earth-facing position on the north, some more plasma west and south of the disk, and some of the magnetic loops of our active regions in various wavelengths. Eyes open, no fear, it's 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.